Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So welcome to our eighth lesson. I'm glad to see you. And before we get started, as usually, our portion of recap, what we learned in the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned that Arabic language has mudaf and mudaf on ilayh, like kitab muhammadin. Kitab, it's mudaf, the thing that's possessed. And muhammadin, it's the possessor. And, the, and mudaf never takes alif lam, and neither does it take tanween in the end. You will never, 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 never ever see uh, something like al kitab muhammadin or kitabun muhammadin. And mudafun ilayh can take tanween, and also as well it can take uh, alif lam, just like here, baytul imami. And because it has alif lam, tanween went away because they don't get along with each other, alif lam and tanween. And also we learned a vocative particle, ya. Yeah. And a noun that's preceded by vocative particle, ya, yeah, lose its tanween. Ya ya siru, ya muhammadu, ya ahmadu, and so on and so forth. And of course, this part, vocative, vocative particle can be met in the Quran many, many times. Like, Ya Musa, Ya Isa, Ya Ayyuhalladina Amanu, Ya Ayyuhal Nabiyu, and so on and so forth. Also, we learned how to say whose, whose book is it, whose pen is it, just like here. Qalamu man hada? Qalam? In this case, is mudaf man mudafun ilayh because it's possessed and this is the possessor. But we said that there are certain words in the Arabic language that indeclinable, uh, which means that it do, uh, it it remains unchanged. So the ending doesn't change, never changes. Just like here, uh, according to the rule, it's supposed to take kasra because it's mudafun ilayh. Like qalamu mani hada, but this is an indeclinable word in the Arabic language. It it never it's never gonna obey to this rule. It's never gonna take uh, kasra. It's some sort of an exception. Uh, what we learned also that uh, a word or a noun that's preceded by tahta uh, takes. Kasra and it's called mudaf ilayh. And I was asked about why is it mudaf ilayh? Because Madi, you said before that mudaf it's uh, something that's possessed and mudaf ilayh it's the possessor. You see the, uh, here in the book it said that taht al kitab al kitab it's mudaf ilayh. Well, it's true. Uh, this logic can be applied that. Mudaf, uh, mudaf in ilayh, it's the possessor because al maktab is the possessor of tahta. It does make sense, and that's true. The, the answer is that uh, mudaf in ilayh uh, has several types of mudaf in ilayh. One of them is that it's the possessor, just like kitabu Muhammadin. It's mudaf in ilayh because Muhammad is the possessor. But in this case, it's mudaf in ilayh. Not because it's the possessor, but because it's preceded by dhorf. This tahta is called dhorf. Uh, like ala, it's harful jar, as we said in the previous lesson, in the previous lessons, uh, preposition. But this is dhorf. But you see the problem, if I were to explain why this is mudafun ilayh, I, I would have to explain why this is dhorf and what is dhorf. But at this point, you won't benefit from this explanation, and therefore I think th we will get enough of uh, only this information, that if a noun is preceded by tahta, it takes kasra. And please don't feel like you are losing some valuable or crucial information. You are not. I will supply you with all the necessary, the most important information. I won't let you skip some valuable information because I'm invested in your education regarding the Arabic language. I want you to uh, master the Arabic language so you would improve your 
uh, life from an Islamic perspective would be better Muslim, so Muslim community would benefit from you and therefore for me. Even with my lame English, <laughs> I won't let you down, inshallah. So I, I will supply you with all the necessary information. Right now you don't need uh, to know why it's Mudafun Ilayh, just like it came in the book. Just know that it's, if it's preceded by Tahta, it takes Kasra. And that's enough. And also we learn that if, uh, if a word that starts with Hamzatul Wasl, Hamzatul Wasl, I told you that you need to memorize these terms like Hamzatul Wasl. It's Alif that doesn't have Hamza. You see this Alif without Hamza. It's called Hamzatul Wasl. Remember it. And if it's preceded by a word, this Hamzatul Wasl is dropped in the pronunciation, in the pronunciation, but remains in writing. Just like here. Ibn Ammarin Talibun, Wabnu Yasirin Tajirun. Wabnu, Wabnu. Just like as this Alif didn't exist. Wabnu. And it's not applied only to these two words. Ibnun was wa ismun. It's applied to any words that starts with Hamzatul Wasl. For example, Allah. Allah it starts with the word Hamzatul with, with the letter with the Hamzatul Wasl. And therefore when we say Rasulullah, we don't pronounce this Hamzatul Wasl. We don't we're not saying we, we wouldn't say Rasulu Allahi. But rather we would say Rasulullah or Kitabullah. And that's what we learned in the previous lesson. And now let's let's finish the the rest of the of the exercises bi The exercise number five. Kawin Jumalan Mufidatan Bimal il Farahi fi Mayali. So you need to make sentences by filling in the blanks with suitable words. Al-Bayti Mughlaqun. Well, Al-Bayti, it has Kasra, it's Mudwafun Ilayh, it's the possessor. What does the house possess? Well, let's say Bab. Bab, it means a door. Bab al-Bayti Mughlaqun. I think it perfectly fits uh, the, the meaning of the sentence. Aina as sayyaruti Well, let's say Aina miftahu sayyaruti Where is the key of the car? Muhammadun sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Rasulu Allah Rasulullah At-tabibi ba'idun Let's say uh, Baytu at-tabibi ba'idun Al-Qur'anu kitabu Allah Kitabullah Al-Qur'anu kitabullah Khadijatu Khadijatu Bintu Hamidin She is a daughter of Hamid Ana Al-Mudarrisi Ana Talibu Al-Mudarris Ana Ibn Al-Mudarris Ah, Ana Ibn Al-Mudarris Well, I am A son of the teacher Al-Talibi Maksurun Let's say Qalam Al-Talibi Maksurun Babu Babu Al-Madrasati Maftuhun The door uh, of the school is open Kharaj Al-Mudarrisu Min Let's say Min Bayt Al-Mudir Well Al-Mudarris The teacher came out uh, of the principal's or headmaster's house. Sahih al-Tarkibat al-Taliyah Well, you need to correct uh, these phrases at tarkibat Well, there are mistakes in all these phrases and we need to find them and correct them. Al-Qalamu al-Talibi What's the mistake? Well, we said that mudaf 
never takes alif lam neither does it take tanwin in this case it took alif lam and that's a mistake we need to remove this alif lam qala mutalibi al qala mutalibi that's a mistake babu as-sayyaratu what's the mistake well as-sayyaratu it's mudafun ilayh and it's supposed to have kasra because mudafun ilayh it's majrur majrur takes kasra in the end marfu' uh, it's a normal ending like dhamma you are supposed to memorize uh, these terms in, in, in the previous lessons but I always like to remind these things because <laughs> sometimes people forget. Bintu Hamidu. Bintu Hamidu. Well, the same mistake. Well, there are even two mistakes uh, in this <laughs> in this in this phrase. Well, Bintu Hamidin. Uh, it, it's supposed to take Kasra in the end and also Tanveen. Hamidin. Ar Rasul Allah. Well, Alif Lam <coughs> is not supposed to be here. Rasulullah. Ismul Waladi. Well, <laughs> uh, just automatically I pronounced it correctly, but the the mistake here is Fatha. It's supposed to take Kasra. Ismul Waladi. Ibnu al Mudarrishi. I don't know what they mean by Sahih al Tarkibati al Taliyah in this phrase because I don't see any, any problems with this with this phrase. Ibnu al Mudarrishi. Ibn al Mudarrishi. Everything's right. Ibn al Mudarrishi. Ah, they were supposed to put uh, Dhamma here. But there is a typo here, they just uh, let it out. Mm -hmm. So let's keep going. It's our seventh lesson uh, exercise. Muhammadun, Ya Muhammadu. Well, they let us know that this Ya vocative particle, it takes a weight and win. It sends a weight and win. Let's put it like that. It sends a weight and win, it doesn't like it. So Muhammadun Ya Muhammadu Ustadun Ya Ustadu Khalidun Ya Khalidu Waladun Ya Wa Ya Waladu Iqra Waktub Ma'adabuti Awakhiri Likalimat Well, you need to place harakat in the end. Ya Ali Yu Ya Abbasu Shaykhun Ya Shaykhu Ya Shaykhu Ya Rajulu Ya Shirun <laughs> It's not like Ya Shiru It's not a vocative particle, it's part of the name Ya Shir has four letters and it's not a vocative particle they try to trick you <laughs> into making a mistake, but you are smarter. We are smarter, alhamdulillah. Ya Ammaru Dukturun Ya Dukturu I hope one day I will become a doctor of Islamic studies, <laughs> inshallah. I'm making dua. But it's not about being a doctor, it's about seeking knowledge, of course. But just, it, this is just my dream to stay as long as I can in Medina and seek knowledge and benefit Muslims in the world. And I hope one day, I hope Allah will grant this huge blessing for me in the future. But we will see, inshallah, this play out. So the eighth exercise, اقرأ المثال الآتي ثم كون أسئلة مثله مشيرا إلى الصور التالية. Well, you need to uh, firstly read al misal this example, and then uh, make sentences on the pattern of this example using uh, the pictures. Like we, we, we see a picture of a book, and it says, Kitabu man hada. Now we see 
uh, a pencil, not pencil, but pen. There we were supposed to say, "Qalamu man hada." Qalamu man hada. Qamis. Qamis. Qamisu man hada. You see, whose book? Kitabu man hada. Qamisu man hada. بيت من هذا سرير من هذا and the exercise number seven number nine well we've covered this also it says that uh, it's about حمزة الوصل حمزة الوصل الوصل اسم الولد محمد واسم واسم البنت زينب زينب this uh, this alif is not pronounced of course it remains in uh, in writing uh, but uh, it's not pronounced as you can see اسم المدرش حامد ما اسم المدير ما اسم المدير or if you want to ask a person, what's your name? You say, Masmuka. Masmuka. Ibnun. Ibnu Khalidin fil madrasati. Wabnu Hamidin fil jamiati. Ibnu al mudarrisi fil fasli. Aina ibnu al mudir. Aina ibnu al mudir. Iqra ma yali. Uh, مراعياً قواعد نطق قواعد نطق همزة الوصل. So read the following, uh, keeping in mind the rules regarding the همزة الوصل. همزة الوصل. ابن محمد في الع في العراق أو في العراق وابن حامد في الهند. خرج ابن الطبيب من البيت خرج ابن خرج ابن الطبيب من البيت ذهب ابن التاجر الى السوق اسم المهندس فيصل واسم الطبيب مسعود ما اسم الرجل ما اسم الرجل what's the name of the man or of this man ابن من أنت؟ whose son are you؟ ابن من أنت؟ and أنت أنت uh, as we said in the pre, in one of the previous lessons uh, it's a masculine noun you say أنت to a man but if you are referring to a woman you say أنت أنت not أنت but أنت but it will come in the future أنا ابن الوزيري أنا ابن الوزير. I am the son of the what is it minister. And here we have الكلمات الجديدة. الحمد لله. Publishers of these books took care of of, of all these words. You can just take a look here uh, and uh, write down the translation in the textbook. And memorize, memorize all these words. You'll be using all of them. These are basics, and therefore you will you, you will benefit from these words. Don't skip them. Memorize them again and again, and review them. Uh, it must be in your mind. And in the end, they kind of recapped the main rule in this uh, lesson. It's about mudaf, like mudafun, and mudafun ilayh, the thing that's possessed. It's mudaf, and the possessor is mudafun ilayh. You see, they equate this sayyaratu with mudaf, al mudarrishi with mudafun ilayh. And that's for, for this lesson. Well, this lesson is uh, shorter than the previous one, but any case, you will benefit from this. Alhamdulillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.